morning, everybody. It's so great to be here. It's great to have you online with us this morning. It's great to have you in person. It's so good to be here. Man, uh, what a beautiful day we've got here in Williamsburg. And it's just awesome to, to be together this morning and celebrate uh, what Christ has done for us. And, and this morning we're going to have communion. And, and so uh, run really quick and grab your juice and, and a cracker or something, a piece of bread. Uh, water, whatever you got, uh, go grab that if you're at home and uh, join us and uh, we'll take communion together. I want us to pray first. I, you, you know, one of the things about communion, it's a time for us to, to come before God and, and once again get our hearts and our minds uh, right with Him, in one with Him and remember what Jesus has done for us because he's the one that made it possible for us to be adopted into his family. And he told us to remember his death. Uh, and, and to do that, we do communion together. And, but I want us to pray first. And, and we've got some folks that really need our prayers. Yeah, you know, um, um, Pastor, Pastor Art, you know, uh, and Sharon, we need to pray for them. Uh, Rob, uh, we've got, uh, boy, my mind just went blank. That's not hard, is it? Uh, but we've got so many others that are struggling with their health and, and we need to be praying for them and praying. You know, it's been a tough year for a lot of folks in our church. And, and so we want to pray in our country, right? And, and at home, I know some of you are struggling with your health as well. And, and uh, so if you need prayer this morning, whether it's your health, emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever it is, would you just click on the, on the link there uh, in, in the uh, chat box? Just say, uh, I need it too. And uh, we're praying for you. We'll pray together right now. In Jesus' name, God, we come before you. And Lord, we thank you for this time we can gather together. Whether it's uh, here in person or at home, God, we're one heart with each other and we're one with you, Father, because of Jesus. And so we pray right now for those that need your healing touch. Whether it's mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, who is our great healer. And we believe in his name, Father, that we can have healing. And so we claim that right now, Father, that you would heal us in Jesus' name. God, speak to our hearts this morning. Father, we bow before you and we recognize that you are with us today. You promised to never leave us, to always be with us. So we commit ourselves to following you this morning. God, our hearts and our minds are on you, not on us. And as we partake of this Lord's Supper of, of Father communing with you, may it become food and drink for our soul. We give ourselves to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Luke it says, Jesus says this, he says, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. You know, we're, we're right in that Easter season, right? And we're in that moment and, and Jesus is coming before them and saying, look, this meal that we're about to take is right before it starts, guys. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to do something so important. He even says, I'll tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its, its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it. And then he said this, or he took the bread. He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and it gave it to his disciples. And he said this, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat, Christ's body. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup of wine and he said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Lord Jesus, thank you 
for your willingness to shed your blood so we could be forgiven and adopted. Take dream. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this time, this moment together when we can celebrate what you've done for us. Your gift, your service to mankind to forgive us and mold us into your image. We give ourselves to you today so we can give back to our world. In Jesus' name, amen.
I got some of that communion juice. Man, it didn't go down right. Whoo. <laughs> oh, you know what? We are the body of Christ, right? That is what we are. And we are together in person. We are together online. And all of us together are the body of Christ. And I'm so thankful for that. This song is a casting crown song. It's one of their first. So it's considered old. It's not like a hymn, but it's an old song. But boy, the words are just so perfect for us today if we are the body. Good morning again. Oh, it's so great to be back 
with you again. I, you know, I, I just love our time together, and, and uh, God's put a message on my heart this morning that, that uh, I'm passionate about. I think, I think that what we're going to talk about this morning, uh, you know, we've been kind of talking about growing in our relationship with God and what that looks like, and last week we began this new series called Reopening Christianity. You know, we've been through the pandemic, we've, we've been looking for and thinking about how to reopen things. And so this morning, I want, to sh- want you to think about restarting, reopening Christianity. You know, last week we, we looked at, you know, are, are you looking backwards? Are you going backwards or are you going forward? Which way are you going? Are you stuck, you know? And with our relationship with Christ, it's so easy for us to get stuck in the past And not be able to move forward because we we hold on to things in our past. And we saw last week that, man, we've got to live in the moment with him and let him forgive us of our past if it's us that we're dealing with. Or forgive others who have hurt us and move forward. Because God has called us to move forward with him. And so this week we're going to look at something that I believe... I believe that this that we're looking at today is the most important aspect of growing in your relationship with God. It's not a program. It's not the 10 things that you do. It is this. And it answers this question. You know, we're we're in this series called Reopening Christianity, and and there's there's a video series that goes along with it on Facebook, I mean, uh, yeah, they're going to be posting it right now. It comes from Right Now Media. If you don't have Right Now Media, you can text 41411, 41411. You can text 41411 and write in there, right now, one word, right now. Everybody understand me? Right now, (laughs) right now, JCCC. And you'll get a link to thousands of Bible studies. And the one we're doing is called Reopening Christianity. And there's five questions that it's talking about. Last week was, am I moving forwards or am I moving backwards? This week is, am I a contributor or a consumer? Am I consuming or... And and you know me, I'm a simple guy. You know, I I like... I like... I. I brought my pot this morning. No, I'm not cooking. You know I like to eat. What is this? Come on, what is this? A pipe. Somebody got it. It's a pipe, right? You can see through it. You can play pirate or whatever with it, right? It's a pipe. And what is this? A pot. A pot. So my question to you this morning is, am I a pot or am I a pipe? Man, I want to be a pipe. You know why? Because, man, in a pot, you just, you just keep putting things in, right? You just keep putting things in. And, 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 and man, as, as in our country, we've just bought into this consumer mentality that, man, I just want more, a little bit more in my pot, and, and I'm going to cover my pot, and I'm going to put some more in it, and I'm going to cover it, and, and eventually you got to get a bigger pot. And so, you know, we get a bigger pot, and we just keep just putting more stuff in it. It's kind of like the Dead Sea. You know, I was reading about this, preparing for this message, the Dead Sea. You you know, the Jordan River runs into the Dead Sea, and nothing runs out of the Dead Sea. One of the reasons why is because it's the lowest place on earth, solid ground. It's the lowest place on earth. And so you go to the Dead Sea, and there's nothing in it except salt. And you you can just lay there and float because... It's just salt. Nothing goes out of it. It's like a pot. You just keep putting things in it and keep putting things in it. And, you you know, and we hold, you, man, some of us, man, we got that pot so tight around. that We just holding on to it so tight, aren't we? Man, you want to see what's in my pot? And we walk around with it. Oh, there's something else I can get. And we pick it up and we put it in our pot and we hold on to it. We're afraid that somehow something's going to get out of our pot and we're going to miss out. 
And that's a miserable kind of life. Man, I want to be a pipe. See that? Man, I want to be a pipe. You know why? Because a pipe, <laughs> I can put so more, much through, more through a pipe than I can a pot. Because you know what the pipe depends on? What comes in. And what comes in goes out. And you see, that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be a pipe. He wants us, man, he wants, he wants his love coming into our life and then our love going out through to other people. And that's why, that's why it's so important for us as a church. Man, our church is all about what? Being pipes. We want to be a vessel of God's love. We want it to be flowing through us. This week was, was so awesome because you guys, we were able to serve our community through warm nights. Where, our, where our, our brothers and sisters in need, you know, maybe they find themselves uh, in a situation where they're, they're displaced from their home. And so our community has gotten together and, and providing a place for them to stay. And, and one of the ways we served this week was we provided meals. I, I, last weekend and through this week and then last night and and tonight you know we're staying and 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 being with them and and, and helping our friends in need there that's who god's called us to be you want to really grow in your relationship with god then learn to be a pipe of God's love that flows out of us and flows to other people. You want to know what will solve the problems of this world? It's right here. It's right here. It's when God's love flows through us. It breaks down all the barriers that we build in our life. Whether it's racism or, or other issues. Even political issues. It will break it down. Why? Because God's love will flow through us. It is so important. Jesus was all about being a pipe. You know that? That's my new term now. I'm a pipe. What are you? I'm a pipe. What? You're a pipe? Yeah, man, I'm a pipe. You know, I was going to use vessel, but that don't make much sense to us, does it? It's kind of like a pot. I want, to be, I want to be a pipe that God's love just flows through me. God, you, you know what? And when we're doing that, you might think, man, I need to be a pot to hold on to God's love. But no. You know what happens? When you are a pipe, man, his love just keeps pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring through. You want to know what will make you so happy in life is to become a pipe. Look what Jesus said here in Mark. Thinking that I'm crazy. That's okay. I can handle that. But Jesus, look what he says. He says, Jesus said, for even the Son of Man, that was his term for himself. He said, even the Son of Man came, read it with me, not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. He came not to be served. This is God in human form. This is God from heaven who had all the worship of the angels, all the glory. And he was willing to come to earth for you and for me. Why? Because of his love for us. Man, his love is so full and so rich and so free. Man, and he gives it to us. I kind of put my own take on it, the PS version. That's Pastor Sam. Down here it says, for even Jesus didn't come to be a consumer, but a contributor. And to give his life so we could be adopted into his family. Isn't that cool? That's what I think, man. Man, I want to be a part of God's family. And the characteristic of God's family is what? To be love and act. We just sang that song. If we are the body of Christ, if we are the body of Christ, then why aren't his hands reaching? Why aren't our hands reaching more? Why aren't our feet going more? Why are we doing? Right? You want to tell somebody, you can tell somebody you love them till you're blue in the face, but they will not believe it until what? Until you show them. 
And it's the same way with us, with the world looking at us and the world seeing us. They're looking at us as followers of Christ, and they're going, man, you guys argue about everything. Man, you guys are against more than you're for. What do we do? We show them by our love. That's how we do it. We show them by our, how do we become a contributor? How do we become, say it with me, how do I become a pipe? How do I become a pipe? First thing is see people as God sees them. See people as God sees them and help them flourish. Flourish. Help them to grow, man. Help them to, to, you help somebody the way you want somebody to help you. Isn't that, isn't that really the golden rule? Love others the way you want to be loved. Isn't that what God said? So you see them as God. How does God see people? You know, back when we first started the church back in 1996, 25 years this year, isn't that cool? 25 years, we've been telling people to love God and to love others. And when we talk about loving others, we always say that people, you that are here, people matter to God. People matter to God. And because they matter to God, they should matter to me. And I should see people. As God sees people. How does God see people? God sees them as someone valuable enough to what? To send his son. Valuable enough to send his son to die. So that, why? So they, that we could be adopted into his family. We got to see people as God sees them. Look what John 13, uh, 34 and 35 says. It says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Jesus is saying, here's the new thing, guys. He's getting away from the, the Ten Commandments, right? He's saying, here's the new one. Here's the new thing. And he says this, love each other. Right? Be a pipe. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Man, it is so important for us to love everyone. Regardless of their social economic status. Regardless of the color of their skin. Regardless of the political party that they choose. You want to be more like Jesus? Then learn to serve. Serve other people. You know what it does to us when we serve? It takes that pot. It takes the lid off of it and it turns it into a pipe. God can take your pot and turn it into a pipe. If you'll just what? If you'll just start thinking about other people. You know, we get, so, we get so caught up in ourselves sometimes, don't we? And we look at what we're going through instead of looking around us at other people and seeing what they're going through in life. That's why it's important for us to pray for each other. Because as we're praying for each other, and even, what did Jesus say? Love your friends? That's easy, right? Did Jesus say that? Yeah. Love your friends? What do you say? Love your enemies, huh? So you need to be praying for your enemies too. And you see, that's when we get God's eyes, is we, when we begin seeing other people as he sees them. How do you see other people? How do I see other people? A am I... Am I consuming here am i wanting everybody to love me and yet i'm holding on to it and so you know what once your pot gets full it's full you got to take stuff out to put more in it and it grows our heart cold and it builds walls around our heart 
But once we start giving of ourselves like a pipe and we start, we, you know, a pipe needs, you know what a pipe needs, right? It's got to have a source. It's got to have something behind it that's pumping through it. Because right now, it's, is, is my pipe empty? No, it's not empty. What's in it right now? Air, oxygen. It's full. You know what? I can put my hands over it. It's still got it in it, doesn't it? It'll eventually get, I don't know, does air get rancid or whatever? I don't know. But man, that, you know, it's, it's full again. And man, love is that way, man, when, when, we're, when we're connected to God and we realize, you know, that's why it's so important for us to get this, that God loves us so much that nothing that we do, nothing we say, nothing can separate us from his love. And when we get a hold of that and then, then we go, okay, God, you love me, now, God, let me love others. And we begin praying for opportunities to love on others. However God wants you to do that. And you know a great place to start that? Here's the great place to start that. At home. In your family. You know the hardest people to love? Are the ones closest to you, right? Don't punch, punch anybody. You know? And you, begin, you know what transformed our marriage? You guys know this that have been here. Here's what transformed our marriage. We've been married, this year will be 40 years. You didn't know I was that old, did you? <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's what transformed our marriage is when I realized that our marriage didn't revolve around me. Because when we first got married, that's what I thought. I'm just being honest. That it was, she was put on this earth to what? To meet my needs, to serve me, to take care, you know, to make, you know, because I, I was a flawed per. I'm still a flawed person. I'm still messed up. But you know when our marriage started really changing was when I realized it's not all about me. It's about her. And man, how can I serve her? How, how can I show her I love her? You, you know how I do that? Cleaning up after myself. You know how else I do that? By washing the dishes. I'm learning to cook. You know, you just start doing things for that other person because, you know what, I love him. I want him to know. I want her to know how much I love her, and so I'm willing to do these things. See, just start doing that in your family. That'll, wow, that'll change your relationship huge. Do it at work. Don't see that person at work as someone you got to climb over to get to the top. See that person as someone you got to bring with you. You both want to get there. You help them up. Guess what? It'll change your work life when you start helping those around you. It'll change your perspective on life when you start serving others. Don't be a sod sat. Here's what a sod sat is. is when you see a need and you go, somebody ought to do something about that. That's a sod sat. Somebody ought to do something about that. No, when you see a need, God has put that need in your face before your hands and your feet for you to do it. So you do it. You guys are awesome at this. You know that? You guys do this all the time. You're serving all the time. And I'm reminding us, you know, let's be pipes. Let's be pipes. See people as God sees them, not as competitors, but as part of God's family. God wants everyone to be a part of his family. Number two, contributors make God smile by their generosity. 
I don't know, if you, if you got kids and, and you see, have you seen that commercial, uh, uh, the Hershey commercial, and, and they got the two girls, and I think their sister, and the two sisters are sitting there, you know, and, 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 and they're saying, you know, if you like something and you get a piece of chocolate, you know, one of the little Hershey chocolate, I love those, used to love those bars. You break them off, you know, peanut butter, right? Four Reese's Cups you had. Oh, man. And they got down to the end, and I think there was two pieces of chocolate left, and said, if you like sharing, give, you know. And, and the little girl picked it up, and she looked at it, and she gave it to her sister. It's like, what? Yeah. Man, that's what life should be. That's, oh, that's what Christianity is about. That's who we are deep within us, man. We should be sharing everything. And you guys do that. You are so generous. Last year, man, we didn't go down. We went up in our giving. You guys, we were able to serve our community more than we've ever been able to serve our community. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud to be your pastor. I'm so proud, what, that we are generous people. And God's called us to be generous. Look what it says here. It says, read this with me. This is so cool. Jesus, talk, He says, give and you will receive. Let's read that again. Give and you will. Come on, let's do it again. You read it with me at home, okay? Give and you will receive. Not just receive, okay? I think, okay, we I think we think I'm going to take something out of my pot, I'm going to give it to them, and then I'm going to get something back. I don't want you to think that way. I want you to think pipe way, okay? Because here's the way it is. It's saying this. It's saying, give and you receive. Your gift will return to you, what? In full. And not just full. Press down. Shaken together. You know, I make, I make baked oatmeal. That's our breakfast every morning. Baked oatmeal. And you take old-fashioned oats, and you put them in a, in a pot, in a measure. You put them in your measuring. You just pour them in your measuring bowl, okay? And you take that, that bowl, and you shake it. What's going to happen? You can put a lot more oats in that bowl. You know, I like, I like, I like uh, um, Quaker Oats, right? I like Quaker Oats. And you take those Quaker, that, I, I think I'll just like the, the tube. Because I always look at that and go, man, that's something to play with. Man, that's a drum, that's something. You can do something with this. And you got that Quaker Oat thing, and, and what we've done is we buy, we buy like, a big thing and then we because it's cheaper and, and, and we buy the big thing then we pour it in the in the tube thing right and you know I'll fill it all the way up and it's like oh that's full nope I just shake it you know what happens man it'll go down that far then I put some more in it shake it down some more that's what God's talking about right here man I, I'm not just gonna. I'm not just gonna give you back what you gave. I'm not gonna give you back what you gave. I'm gonna give you more. I'm gonna give you an endless supply. I'm gonna shake it down and keep it coming, keep it coming. And that's what he says. He says, "Press down, shaking together to make more room for more. Running over, poured into your lap. You're not gonna be able to hold it all." This pot will only hold, I don't know, maybe a gallon or so, or maybe more. I don't know how big that thing is. How much, how much can you get out of this if you've got water running through it? Endless, endless. It'll get you wet all over, right? This, I might could jump out of the way if you're throwing this at me. But this, I got you. The amount you give, look at this. He said at the beginning, give and you'll receive. The amount you give will re determine the amount you get back. Come on. What, what are you lacking in your life? 
You know, I've, I've said this before. What are you lacking in your life? Are you lacking time in your life? Then what? Start giving your time away to others, to God. Give God the first part of your day, right? You give others time. What's the most important thing we got? Time, because we can't get it back. But you start giving it away, and you know what happens? It seems like it grows, because God does that. He presses it down, shakes it together, and gives you more. And it grows. You need finances? Hmm? Man, we've been here. Start giving to God. Giving to others. And watch what God does. He shakes it together. I'm not saying you give to God and he's going to give you a brand new Mercedes or anything. like. I've never had a Mercedes. If you got one, that's cool. I like them. They're awesome. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. Or a Porsche or whatever. I'm saying that God will meet your needs. That you got to get out of your own head. Open up your head. Open up your heart. And begin generosity. Giving to others. You know, we did a message a while back called uh, extravagant generosity. It's where we go over and above. Giving back to God and watching him use us. So that's how we become a contributor instead of a consumer. Man, we want, we, we want to be in the game. We don't want to be watching the game. And that's where church comes in. What is the church? The church is, number three, is a family of contributors that always multiplies. It's always growing. It seems like instead of multiplying that we're about dividing now. Are you with me? Anybody hearing me? What am I talking about? Because we're telling everybody what we're against instead of what we're for. We're showing everybody what we're, we don't want instead of what God wants. What has God called us to do? Love him and love others. Man, that's it in a nutshell. Love God, love others. We have preached that for 25 years here. Love God, love others. That's the key to life. That's the key to living. And we as a church, we're a family that wants to continually, what? Multiply. And as we're loving people, we want people coming so we can love them into God's family. This church isn't about me. This church isn't about you. You know who's it about? It's about God and it's about everybody outside. Right? I was reading about this this week and, and thinking about it and, and there's a church I can't remember the name of it right now but over the entrance of their of the doors over the entrance where you come in it, it says at the top servants entrance man I like that so whoever comes in man we're servants of God we're servants of each other we're to be serving each other Helping each other to grow. Look what Paul says in Ephesians. He says, my task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along. Okay? It's a secret, right? Through followers of Jesus like yourselves gathered in churches. What's church? Is this building the church? Come on. You guys know. No, this building's not the church. Who's the church? You are. I am. We are. We're the church. We're gathered together. We're a gathering. Whether we meet in this building or outside or across the street or in a restaurant, we're the church. This extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels. What? What is being talked about? Because that church became a pipe of God's love. And man, that, that, that thing flowed. And the churches were taking up offerings for each other in other places. You know, Jerusalem, where, Christ, where, where it started with Jesus, you know, they were under tremendous persecution. And so the churches started taking up 
collection to send to the, 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 the folks in Jerusalem who were really suffering. And they began taking up money and sending it to them. It's kind of like, you know, we've adopted Guayabal in the Dominican Republic. And, and we're, we're partnering with Food for the Hungry in order to take care, you know, to help that community there that we love dearly. And we didn't get to go last year. And, man, I missed it. But man, as we can do this, we can do so much more together than we can individually. That's how we could serve, uh, you know, our friends in need this past week and today and tomorrow. And, and how we can serve them. We can do it together. And in the next chapter, Paul says this, Instead, we, speak, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. Are you getting the idea here? I'm put in the body of Christ not to grow myself. Why am I put here in the body of Christ? To help you grow. To help you grow. You're put here not to grow yourself. That's the consumer mentality. America is full of it. And we jump from church to church to church. Just trying to find out that place where I'm where I can get the most out of something, right? I'm going to the, I'm gonna go to this grocery store because they got this cheaper, and I'm going to go to that grocery store because they got that cheaper, and we, just, and we do churches that way. Well, they got a great children's program, so I'm going over there and do that. And, oh, I like their music over here, so I'm going to go to that one. Oh, I like what they're doing here. So I, and, and you know what happens? We never, when you're a consumer, when you're a consumer, what are you doing? You fill in your pot. And you never get out of your own way to help somebody else, to help them to grow. So guess what happens? You don't grow. You're just going from place to place to place. God didn't call us to do that. God called us to be a part of a local family. And you're part of our family online as well. He's called you to be a part of this family here. What? For you to give it away so that you'll grow you got to give it away in order to grow you got to help somebody else in some way so that you grow you know the greatest times of growth in my life is when i've been serving other people you want to know how to grow in your love for other people here's here it is love them show me love them you having trouble in your marriage Here's the answer. Start showing them you love them by your actions, not your words. It's that easy. And it's that hard. It's hard, isn't it? Change your attitude at work. You ever had a bad attitude at work? Man, I have. I hate it. I, not, not this one. I love you guys, you know? But I've had jobs before. You know, I was a mechanic. I was other things. I've done just about everything. And I had a job one time, and I hated getting up in the morning and going to work. Anybody else with me? You ever had that? Hated getting up and going to work because I knew my boss was going to be there, and I knew how he was going to be, you know, and it was awful. And the closer I got with God, it was like, he don't need to change. You need to change. It's like, God, are you serious? And look at this guy. Look what he's doing to everybody. Look how he's treating everybody. And you know what? I, I got a little bit of that, and I started changing a little bit. And, and, and it just took a little bit. And it started changing my attitude toward him which made it easier for me to get up and go to work. He still did the same thing. He didn't change. Who changed? I changed. I changed. So where are you at today? 
If I could give you one thing that would help you grow the most in your Christian life, it is this. Move from being a consumer to being a contributor. You know? Start giving yourself away. Have I said anything about how much of this you know? Come on. No. What have I said? You fall in love with God and let his love flow through you. And God will give you opportunity to share with folks, you know, why are you doing this? Why, why are you bringing us food? Why are, you, why, are you, why are you taking care of my car? Why are you building this in my house? Why are you doing this for me? Why are you cleaning up this mess? Well, because God loves me. And he loves you. And God wants me to show his love by loving you this way. Pretty easy, isn't it? That's the message. So how we doing, guys? How we doing? There's an old story about a rabbi and, 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 and he gets a picture of what heaven and hell are like. And he goes up to this one door, and on the door, it's got hell wrote on it, you know. And, and so he goes in this door, and he looks around, and there's all these people sitting around these tables, and they're full of food. I mean, and they're, but they're screaming in hunger and starvation. And on their arms, that he sees they've got uh, um, a, a great big spoon attached to their arm, you know, great big long. And they're trying to get the spoon, and they're trying to put it in their mouth, and they can't get any food, so they're starving to death. And, and he goes, I can't handle this anymore. They're all starving in here. And so he leaves there, and, and, and they take him to another door, and, and it says heaven. And he opens the door, and he looks in, and he's, he's kind of horrified because it's kind of the same picture. There's food everywhere on the table, and he sees all these people, and they've got this really long spoon on their, on their hands, and he's just like, oh, no. But he, he looks, and they're all happy, and they're all singing. And, I mean, it's just a picture of a great party. Why? Because they're each feeding each other. And that's, that's the church. The world's outside trying to take and take and take. And we're here, man, let's give it away. Let's give it away. Let's give it away. You're never happier than when you're giving love. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I am so grateful that you gave the greatest act of generosity of your own son so that we could know you and he gave us a beautiful picture of what life's all about he came to serve not to be served and so God and he gave his life for us so that we could know you so we could be in your family and so today God we we come before you and we want to move our mentality from the pot mentality of consuming to being a contributor, to being a pipe, Father, where your love can flow through us freely. God, may we, may we allow you to flow through us this morning. If you're here and you want to move from that mentality, you know, it begins with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he came to earth that he died on the cross to pay my penalty, your penalty, for not living up to God's standard. And we believe that. And God said, you believe that and believe that God raised him from the dead, the resurrection. And you ask God to forgive you. And you want to commit your life to following him says that's the answer and he welcomes us into his family and then we're called to go back out and do the same thing just to love others god thank you for that privilege of being your hands and feet to this world help us in our attitudes and in our hearts god to reach across to everyone that we come across with love your love 
We give ourselves to you today to be a pipe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you a pipe today? Let's move toward being a pipe. I love you guys. I'm so grateful that so many are not pots here. You already exhibit being a pipe, using what God has given you to love on others. Let's sing together.